So Dan, we need to set up a new druid site for Lunasaur. Don't we need some tools? What, you think we were going to build, Stonehenge or something? I left a shovel over there. For the rest of the work, we'll make do with local material in our two hands. Will this take long? No. Maybe just an hour or two to prepare. I've got just the right spot in mind for a summer festival. Jody will be delighted. It's the same spot she said she had her first druid service. And this will be her last one. Full circle. We'll be there soon. What's there? Not much, just a campground, a fire pit and some trees. Peter. Some other faiths require fancy buildings, bell towers, and stained glass windows. All of which have lessons and stories to tell about the type of faith. Druids can and do worship anywhere. Anytime they feel the inspiration upon them. So the druids usually meet outside for services? Yes, for the seasonal observances. We see sacred patterns in the landscape, the weather, and living creatures. All of which are in constant change, unlike the static setting of a church. Those natural cycles, like a circle, return to their starting points. Over and over again. That is at the very root of what teaches and inspires druids. Nature is our stage upon which we perform our sacred drama. It has to be outdoors. Don't druids have books and metaphysical teachings that require a quiet, dry interior to contemplate? If you want to meditate or read, you could go inside, of course. Can't be outside all the time. For example, I spend a lot of research time on the computer in my room, or writing my druid diary, and talking online. So a lot of online and indoor druidry does happen on the side, especially if you have a personal altar inside your home. But the actual group rituals are outdoors. Weather permitting. Obviously, Michigan gets too cold in January to stand still outside for 30 minutes. If you're patient and flexible, you can move the ritual a day earlier or later. Or just wait there for a break in the weather. The ritual is really at the mercy of the weather, isn't it? Sometimes there is a lesson in the bad weather that's more important than the service we planned. Comfortable or not, sometimes you just do it. I have seen rituals in the warm summer rain, and even in a blizzard. Hard to praise nature, if you're hiding inside, looking out a window. We're setting up a new site. Do druids change locations often? Back in Archdruid Henry's time, they used to use one site all year long. That was nice since it really made you appreciate the seasons. However, that site is deep in the dead zone of the forest now. Since those trees died, we've rotated among a few sites. As long as I'm willing to do most of the work, they let me choose the sites now. Why not stay in one place? Sometimes a site doesn't want to be used. And, I think a summer site is completely different from a winter site. I prefer green pine trees rather than leafless oak trees in January, don't you? Site selection is crucial for a strong grove, just as important as choosing a leader. Really? Sure, imagine a grove as a stool with three legs. Very druidic. You have your site your leader and your congregation supporting the stool. 
If you have all three legs, the growth is stable and thriving. Only two, and you will be surviving, but teetering. Only one, and you will struggle to stand up. And if the stool falls over? Then you are flat on the floor and a grove doesn't exist anymore. I enjoyed your presentation. Druidism seems so easy when you are in a grove full of druids on campus. I know it seems that way, but off on Muskrat Island, you can probably concentrate better without all the distractions here. I think solitary druidism is very lonely. I'm worried I won't get far as a druid, all by myself. Is it possible on my own? Let's examine the word, solitary. First of all, Wanda, you have to remember that you are never alone in nature. You might be the only human with insight, but you are surrounded by living things, even just the microscopic creatures that live on and within us. So I'm in nature? Even when I'm indoors? Even if you are locked in a solitary confinement cell, you are breathing the air shared by the entire world. Still standing on the same earth that billions of people and animals walk upon. The water you drink has been through a million bodies. You are a creation of nature yourself, and you will fully return to it when you finish this life. And the spirits, gods, and ancestors are everywhere, if you really wish to communicate. You are connected. Always. Never thought of it like that. But it's still nice to have druids next to you. Of course, the more the merrier. But most druids will leave town after a few years, or have periods when work, family or health pulls them from the company of other druids. Even in the busy Jack Pine Grove, we spend just a few hours per month in each other's presence. Fortunately, technology is helping druids to bridge this distance gap, but nothing can totally replace being together in the same place. So we're often solitary, but always together? It just depends on my perspective. Yes, the question is not when we will be solitary, but how long we will be solitary? Some four hours, days, months or years. If you are patient, the stars align, and you are ready for opportunity, you will eventually meet up again with druids, or like-minded people. Please don't let the time in between grove activity go to waste. Each encounter with someone or a walk in the woods has potential for awareness. You sound like my aunt. So I should use my solitary time wisely? Yes, please do. It's actually a gift. As a priestess, I get precious little solitary time because I'm always helping others. I treasure the chance to recharge my batteries, take a walk in the woods, read a book, do some painting like you, write in my diary, or just sit quietly and think. As an artist, I get a lot of inspiration from the time I'm not painting, or doing much of anything, just observing what is around me. I guess that is like Druidry? Ah, yes, just over here. This is the spot. Leaves are changing already in this field. It's a strange forest. This spot is two months ahead of the rest. Probably got the tree blight. Shouldn't we pick a healthier site? The trees here will probably not bloom in the spring. 
I thought this festival could be a lively farewell salute to them. Wouldn't you like someone to visit when you're on your deathbed? Let's get started. Wait. Let's stop and say hello. Hello. I hope you don't mind, but we'll be using your lovely location in three days time for a big festival. Is that okay? What's the answer? Wait. It's okay. Thank you. We were going to tidy up your spot before, and then, of course, after the festival. Okay, Peter, let's walk about and check for holes or rocks people might stumble upon, broken glass, and other hazards. Okay. Site seems safe enough. What's with the teepee? Oh, that. It belongs to Thomas. He's been camping out here. He got that for $80 at an estate sale. He says he's going to use it for some camping festival trip this summer and wants to test it out. We'll use it to store stuff and if someone needs a shady spot to take a snooze or change clothes. I am rather surprised he brought water bottles, and some food. Thomas never helped with the setup before. People change. What do we do now? Haul water. And fetch wood. All this work is not so much to prepare the site, as it is a preparation of our minds and souls for the service. The arts and religions draw much power from the same source. I take out time, partly for my own sanity, but more I charge up, the more I can share when I can be with the group. Everybody has to find a different balance of personal and group time. Can I worship by myself? I'm not a priestess. Just because you are a reformed druid, doesn't mean every religious expression has to be through the order of worship, in a group, or with the priest. Go ahead. Make up your own private ceremony, build an altar if you wish. Will they listen to me? Of course, you can talk to the gods, ancestors, nature spirits, whatever, whenever you want to. Just start praying, and someone or something will answer you, just listen carefully. Any druid can do that, which is something I often forget to tell them. Folks get too reliant on me to organize an event, when they can do all kinds of other things on their own. How often should I do druidry? When you want to, or when you need to. Some people have a regimen, a schedule, to make sure they don't forget to set aside time for their druidry. But it doesn't have to be every Saturday, it could be in the middle of lunch. Take a break when it feels right. In order to stay in sync with the Jack Pine Grove, you might want to celebrate at the same times we do. Your schedule is really up to you, and fate. Any suggestions of what to study? There are no end of study courses, bibliographies, and suggestions from other reformed druids, other druid groups, and from a million other religious scholars online. Follow what interests you, ask ideas from people you respect, and look for lessons all around your daily life. I can loan you my favorite books, if you'd like. Offhand, there's Skip Ellison's The Solitary Druid, Ellen Hopman's Druid's Herbal for Sacred Tree Medicine, and Philip Cargam's Druid Way, all are soft, gentle books to start a personal path.
That would be wonderful. I think when I go back to Japan next summer, I'll visit my aunt and learn more about Shinto, and see how it can work with my Druidism. Is that okay? Sounds lovely. We don't expect folks to do Druidry for their entire lives. Some leave, some come back. Some leave again. Doing and being a Druid are two separate things. Druidry waxes and wanes, just like the moon or tides. It's lovely when they are with us, and we wish them well when they go off on new adventures. Thanks, Jody. Are we done? Yes, but I wanted to show you one of my favorite little hollow trees over there. I've never told anyone, but I keep a little silver pendant inside it and leave food there. I'd like you to keep it company when I leave, okay? Let's get some more firewood here. Why are we going this far? I don't like to forage closer than 200 feet. Why not? A few reasons. 1. I like to keep the site looking as wild as possible, and that includes leaving alone all the nearby standing and fallen wood. 2. At night, we might need a quick piece of wood, and I don't want to go into deep dark forest looking for some more. 3. It might disturb the earth spirits and botch up the ritual. Why do you pick spots so deep in the forest? This one is 30 minutes away. I've seen quite a few sites next to the campus. I find if you pick them too close to the druids, then folks aren't ready to be druids by the time they arrive. This way gives them time to prepare. So, the journey is more important than the destination. Kind of like that. Besides, people appreciate things more if you make them work for it. Although they'll complain about it. Grab a few more logs and let's head back. We don't need so much. Anything else? There's no theoretical end of site preparation and decoration for a grove with enough time creative vision, willing hands and permanence. We don't have much of any of those, but it'll work fine anyway. So we're done then? How will the site be used? A few of us will come early and put out the food, get the fire going, and maybe rehearse a few liturgical lines together. Knowing Jody's preferences, She'll start our procession from that path out of the woods down there. Pass between the tent and the table, and then walk clockwise around this campfire three times. Where's the altar? Don't we need one? It would be nice to have one. The table is way too big, so let's just use one of the larger rocks by the campfire. Seems a bit small and unimpressive. No megalith. There you go again. We love big rocks as much as the next druid, but you gotta work with what you got. Besides, we have a lovely view. Sufficient trees. A regulation fire pit. And a nice grassy area for picnics and games. It only takes 20 minutes for folks from campus to reach here. 30 minutes if we take the scenic route. They love it. No ghosts out here? Well, probably a few. We were too close to the deadwoods, thus the strange foliage here. We'll be sure to have everyone leave the site before sundown. Wish we could stay later. Yes, most of the great sights out here are daytime use only now. 
That's why Andrea's backyard was so great for people's schedules, and we could have bonfires there all night. Anything else? You in a hurry or something? It's a beautiful warm day and setting up a site is hard work. I'm going to take a nap in the cool shade of this tree and listen to the birds. We'll leave in an hour or two. Why don't you look around some more? Maybe survey the trees for the research project, or just sit down for a while and think? Give inspiration a chance to catch up with you.